Hey everyone, welcome back to part two. In the last video kind of of this little series, we saw how Comcast hijacked outbound DNS traffic and how it can be frustrating, uh, especially when you're using Cloudflare Zero Trust to try to secure your internet and DNS traffic. So today we're gonna dive deeper into how to set up the DNS over HTTPS with Pi-hole um, in Cloudflare Zero Trust so you can securely encrypt your outbound DNS using Cloudflare and circumvent any of these kind of ISP filters or ISP hijackings of your DNS. So without further ado, let's get started. So before we begin, I do wanted to go over really quickly kind of what you're going to need for this. So in my case, I'm going to be using a virtual machine that has two cores and two gigabytes of RAM, um, but you can use a Raspberry Pi, you can use um, a mini PC, you can run it probably on your Windows PC as well if you're using the Linux utilities. Um, but you really don't need too much for this. It's pretty not intensive at all. I would just recommend you run it on a pretty reliable system because if your network is going to rely on this DNS, you don't want it to go offline and your whole internet kind of just goes offline as well with that. So um, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to be using that virtual machine. We're going to run Pi-hole on it, which is a um, DNS resolution kind of server, I guess you could say. We're going to be using Pi-hole as well, and that's kind of a DNS server um, that also does ad blocking if you want it. Um, I'm not going to specifically show you how to use the ad blocking because it's kind of irrelevant for this video, but um, Pi-hole is going to kind of just be the connection between your local network and the Cloudflare um, DNS traffic. So let's get that started here. We're going to log into the virtual machine. All right, so let's proceed here with the Pi-hole installation. You can grab this command over from their one-step automated install on their website. It's just docs.pihole.net slash main slash basic dash install. Um, so you're going to run this curl command, it's going to use SSL and download the um, install command and it's going to run it through bash. So we're going to download this and it's going to update our packages. It's going to do a bunch of things here that it's going to prepare the server for Pi-hole to be installed. Um, in addition to that, it's going to actually ask you how you want to install Pi-hole. So we'll get that set up right here. Alright, so let's run through the installer here. So it's the automated installer, um, it's open source. Um, you're going to continue. Um, you want to give your server a static IP address. You can do this on your router. You can do it on the um, on the NetPlan file itself, but I would recommend you just do it on your router. It's probably just easier to keep it all in one spot. So um, make sure you have that set up. Then you can click continue. Um, and we're going to say yes. So I'm going to go to skip because I have it set up on my, on my router. So I'm going to skip because I already know that it's set up. Um, next thing, it's going to ask where you want your upstream to be. Honestly, for right now, it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to go down here to Cloudflare, click Enter. We're going to change that later. Um, and now it says to block ads, it relies on a third-party block list. Um, so you can use their block list. I'm going to just say no. Um, yes, we do want to install the admin web interface. And it's going to use Lite HTTPD to get that going there. So we're going to click yes. Query logging is up to you. Uh, if your server is secure, there's no issue in query logging. It just logs every device's DNS queries into a file that you can go back and trace back later. Um, and you can also change how private the logs are. So you could have it show everything. You can have it, have it hide the domains, hide the domains and clients, or be completely anonymous. It's going to show everything for the purposes of this video. So now it's going to walk through the installation process. It's going to go through all of the steps. And then at the end of that, it's going to give us a username and password. So we're going to be back as soon as this is done running through the install. So we're going to run IP space A. It's going to give us the IP address of our um, server here. We're going to copy this. Go into Chrome. Paste this on in there. And should just be able to go to that page slash admin. And since we don't have the password, we're going to run pihole-a-p going to set a new password and I'm actually just going to remove the password entirely so if we reload this page we'll get right in this is Pi-hole. this is just the standard just kind of UI that it gives you um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to settings and DNS you'll see how we set our upstream servers to Cloudflare that's fine for now one thing I will change um, is I would permit all origins especially if you have multiple VLANs it only accepts requests from um, local devices by default on the network so if it's outside of your local subnet you're gonna want to permit all origins um, that'll just allow everything to connect to Pi-hole so um, that's all we need to do there now we're gonna go over here to Cloudflare and we're going to add a DNS location and we're gonna label this um, video demo and our source IP address um, it doesn't necessarily matter, we're just going to click add location, but we are going to set this as the default DNS location. So if you're doing this based on a site in general, if you want anything coming from the IP address to be logged um, on Cloudflare, um, you can do that, but I, for this video, and especially if your ISP is blocking it, then there's no purpose in doing the IP address based logging and that kind of thing. Um, so like I said, we're just going to be using the DNS over TLS here, and that should be all that we need. So um, now we just need to set this up on Linux, so we can actually go over here. 
um, and it's trying to get us to use the resolve.conf, but I actually don't have IPv6 on my internet connection. When you go back over here to the virtual machine, there is this um, guide that I have. I will paste it on the screen here if you want to find this. Um, but basically, this guide is going to show us how to do it. It's super easy, um, and we're going to be using the AMD64 architecture, but if you have your Raspberry Pi, you can do the ARM64 as well. It works the same. So we're going to paste this in here. It's going to download Cloudflare for Linux, and Cloudflare is what, how we're going to use the DNS over HTTPS. Um, and Cloudflare is how we're going to use the DNS over HTTPS. So now we're just running through the install um, options here. And now it's saying it cannot be acquired because the permission is denied. So let's just go. We're going to switch the root user. We're going to do sudo i. And we're going to run these commands once more. Hopefully it'll work now that we are in the root user. And as you can see, it is actually already installed. So it did end up working. Now we're going to run Cloudflare v. And as you can see, we do have 24.6.0, which is the latest version. So now we're going to create a user for Cloudflare. So we're going to give them a user account, sudo user add s user dash s bin no login dash r dash capital M. So what this is going to do, it's going to create a user account for Cloudflare. It's not going to give it a login right, um, but it will give them a user account for permissions and that kind of thing. So we're going to run that. And now we're going to go to, we're going to nano this file, we're going to go to sudo nano dash etc slash default slash cloud flared. So in this file is where we're going to actually put all of our um, DNS locations. So kind of like we saw in PyHole earlier, we're going to add the options here. So um, we're going to, first of all, this is the port cloud flared is going to kind of provide DNS on. It's fine, you can leave it like that. Um, if we go over here to the 1.1.1.1, we're going to actually swap this out for, um, I believe it is this HTTPS URL, URL right there. So we can actually just delete all of this stuff. So we can just delete everything after the first upstream, paste this in, it's the full URL that we need. This kind of code here is what's going to bind it to our account so we can do the filtering and logging and that kind of stuff. I just did Control X Y on the keyboard. Now we're gonna paste those user permission commands in there. And now we're going to create Cloudflare as a service on the VM. We're going to run sudo nano slash etc slash systemd slash system cloudflare.service. Um, and then we're just going to paste this all in. Like I said, I will have all of this linked in the description below. The systemd service is how we can set up Cloudflare to, to use um, systemctl commands to run it. And it will also start it on boot, which is also nice. So control X, Y, enter, and close out of that nano file. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to run a single command. It's going to start the service right now and enable it so it starts on the next reboot as well. So sudo systemctl enable space dash dash now cloud flared. There we go. So it, it has started the service and it is now running the service. So let's give it a test query. Um, so we can say dig and we can give it the local IP address of the VM which is 127.0.0.1. This is the same on every VM and every um, Raspberry Pi or anything like that. 127.0.0.1 is your local IP address of like the actual thing itself. It's not accessible over your network, just on the VM itself. So we're going to give it port 5053, and we're going to say beam networks.dev. So here we go. Um, it's giving us two IP addresses for beam networks.dev, and that is exactly what we're looking for. So now that we have that all configured, let's go over here back to Chrome, and then we're going to go into the Pi Hole settings, and we're going to uncheck the boxes for the Cloudflare upstream. And we're going to give it a new upstream of 127.0.0.1 port or hashtag 5053. And now we'll go down here and we'll click save. So now all of the upstream traffic from PyHole is going straight up to Cloudflare through the encrypted DNS. It's really, really simple. So I'm going to actually pull up another VM here off screen. And I'm going to find one that can talk to this. And we're going to do a few tests here where we can figure out how well this is working. Okay, so I have another VM pulled up here. Um, this VM happens to be on the same network, and we're going to use DNS from the other um, VM. So first of all, we want to make sure we have the correct IP address. So we're going to run IP space A again, and we will use this right there. And now we're going to ping it just to make sure you can talk to it. Yes, we can. And then we're going to run another DNS query. So we're going to NS lookup beamnetworks.dev and give it the IP address of our DNS server we want to use. Um, and there we go. So it took a second there, probably because it was not cached in PyHole yet. Um, but as you can see, we are now seeing data in PyHole if we go to domains. Sorry, if we go to query log, you'll see that we have um, three queries there for beamnetworks.dev um, for the IPv4 and v6, uh, as well as the PTR record, which I don't know why it's doing this. There we go. As well as the PTR record. Um, for the local, um, so it would look it reverse look up the VM itself. Um, this 
separate VM. I'm not sure why it did that, but it did. There we go. So that's kind of the NS lookup process. That's how we can use that DNS server. Now, um, it's just a matter of going in on your computers and setting your computers to use the IP address of your new DNS server. So we can do this by going into our DNS settings on our computer and clicking the plus button for a new server. And we will type in the IP address of the virtual machine, just like so and we'll click OK. That'll save it. Your computer's DNS will then route to the new DNS server. You can also do this on your router's DHCP server by um, setting your DHCP settings to use DNS from your IP address of your Pi or whatever you're running this on. So you can switch over your entire network to be using this. In addition to that, you can also go on your router and you can actually set it to block outbound DNS. Um, because you actually don't need outbound DNS for this since this is using HTTPS you can essentially block all outbound DNS traffic to force everything to go through your um, encrypted DNS server and if you go over here to firewall policies we can create um, different policies um, based on certain conditions so if you do, if you want to block certain websites block certain types of websites we can do that all here in Cloudflare Zero Trust it's super easy you can block it you can set YouTube to restricted or safe search you can um, allow certain websites if they're getting blocked by default um, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. It's quite an amazing software. In addition to that, if you wanted to, you can add local DNS records on Pi-hole. Um, you can also block certain websites on Pi-hole as well. If you go to domains, you can add a domain to the block list and locally block it on Pi-hole. Um, I would encourage you to do it through Cloudflare because it shows a nice error page if you configure that, which you can over here under settings and custom pages and block page. You can actually set up this block page to show um, kind of an error message that way you know yourself that it's cloud for blocking it versus something else. So, so like I said, it's a very powerful tool. I highly recommend you switch over your DNS to this. As you can see, Cloudflare is already showing um, the query that I made. So it's quite some cool stuff here. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.